Hey, what's up, Internet? I've had this camera for like almost two years now. The Sony HDR CX405. This has to be like the cheapest Sony Handycam that I've ever owned when it comes to the feel of it. Like it just feels cheap. They're about 200 bucks right now. Sometimes you can find them on sale for cheaper than that. But yeah, worthy of a review. I'm going to go over some pros and cons, tell you whether or not it's worth it. Let's do this. Oh, man. We're gonna start with some pros and cons. Pro, it's got a lens cover. Wow, it's manual, but it's got it. Pro, it has a screen. Con, it's not a touch screen. Ooh, but maybe that's it's a pro though, because Sony has kind of a track record of having bad touch screens on their cheaper camcorders. So you use this little joystick thing, and it's actually a pro. It's easy to use the functions. When you go into like the menu and stuff, and you see image quality and setup and all that. Yeah, that's that's good. Pro, it uses SD cards. Oh, and you can also use the Sony uh, like Micro or M2. I don't know. I, I don't have any of those, but I'm glad at least you can also use an SD card. Pro. Pro, removable battery. So if your battery gets dead, you could uh, just replace it with another battery. Con, unlike normal Sony Handycams, or the ones before it, rather. You cannot get an extended battery. So, yeah. Now, this one is a couple years old, and I have neglected it. Like, it's sat at, like, zero charge for months on end. And it'll still hold the charge, and it actually records for quite a while. So that's a pro. Record time is all right. Pro HDMI out for if you want to uh, HDMI out. <laughs> And another pro is it's got this USB plug and it says multi and I've never used that cause pro and the hand grip strap there is uh, it says charge but I could swear that I've actually also transferred files through that but it says charge on it that makes me question it so along with the battery not being able to be expandable the biggest pro of the camera follows which is that the USB cord that's built in, it can actually be plugged into a external like a battery pack. And if it has a two amp plug on it, you can actually run the camera off of that. And if you get a big enough one of those, like this 20 milliamp hour one that I, or sorry, 20,000 milliamp hour one that I have, uh, you can run for a very long time on this camera, which takes it out of the whole cell phone realm and puts it into, hey, this is the reason you bought the camera, so you can record long periods of time in one shot. Nice. Pro, you can take pictures with it. Oh yeah, 9.2 megapixels. Pro, it can take a hit. You can see a little scratch here. I've dropped it before and it keeps working. That's really good, actually. Con, it feels cheap. I, I think I said that. It's super lightweight, which is, I guess that's a pro that is lightweight. So if you mount this on like a suction cup mount on a window or something, it doesn't put much pressure on it. Hmm, yeah. And another pro, you might not see this one coming, but uh, I'll link my video about my Spark EV here. The driving portion of that video, I ended up reverting to using the audio that was recorded with just this camcorder, and the audio is pretty good. It's stereo as well, so yeah, pro. And it's 55, okay. Pro, you can record 60p with this thing. Not bad, and it uses that uh, XVAC codec that can record 50 megabytes per second. Like, that's it's crazy amount of data. Uh, there's a con with that, though, is that the sensor on this camera just doesn't feed that 50 megabytes with much information. Like, it's just, it's grainy, but it does work. But let's say con is the picture quality. However, if you're looking for, like, a, a just a good, a decent 1080p picture, this actually cranks one out. It's, it's all right. I have an HDR CX350, I think it is. I gotta try to fix that thing. I soaked it in oil replacing my transmission fluid my motorhome i uh, hope to do a video on that but uh, the picture quality between this one which can shoot up to 50 megabytes per second and that one which only does 24 megabytes per second that one still has a better image but yeah what's cool as additional pro is with that higher frame rate and even an extra pro is that you don't have to shoot in that 50 megabytes per second format you can do uh, avchd and then choose different qualities which is much lower um, bit rates but one thing I haven't really used, and I'll talk about it in a little bit, is this dual video recording. You can record your regular video and then also a lower quality video 
in the background to like share it. So you have two different files. I've never used it, but that's that's a pro. If you just want to like share videos, but you got to get them off the camera and onto the internet. Hmm. That micro SD, uh, it uses a XC format or up to that. So you can put in 128 megabyte cards like I have here. And that gives me a AVCHD 60i, which is 30 frames per second. Uh, I'm looking at 11 hours right now, and I think I've got about an hour of footage on here. That's a lot. Do you remember 8 millimeter tapes? Good old AVI format. Gosh, I think the pros outweigh the cons. But like, if you pick this thing up, you're just feeling like it's really cheap. Pro, it does have some sort of image stabilization that does seem to work decent. Uh, go figure, it's a Sony, and they're pretty good at that. The lens isn't shaking around like in an AX33 or anything, but uh, yeah, it's got that. Con, it does not have an external microphone jack. Pro, you can adjust a lot of the manual portions of this. You can adjust the uh, f-stop all the way from 1.8 to, to f10 is what it's showing. But like the exposure, that's one th that I keep locked on so it's not constantly like over or under exposing or changing the exposure just it'll just set that is nice congrats you survived the pc list is it good or is it bad you decide after i decide i think that this is actually a good camera for 200 bucks you can do a lot of different things with 200 bucks and not buying this is, is, of course, that's a choice. I didn't think this camera would be on the market for so long, but it still is. And that's kind of crazy. I've actually used it in quite a few of my videos, and it is really handy. Because it's lightweight, it doesn't put much stress on any sort of gear. And you can, like, fit it in your pocket, too, if you needed to. And it's just, it's a good backup camera if you needed a backup camera and you already have like those power packs like backup for your phone that's a good combination this with one of those the screen is bright enough to like view when you're in bright sunlight so that's good you're not going to be really slowed down there it's just when you're using it it just feels so light and so cheap but it actually does hold up pretty good so i hope this gives you a better idea about this camera and if you're going to go buy one go buy one and if you've got a lot of extra money to spend on another camera, sure, Sony makes good ones. I think the AX53 is now out. I like the AX100. It's several years old, but that's a good one. But yeah, this HDR CX405 holds up pretty good. So anyway, hope that helped. See you later, Internet.